Hey y'all, welcome back. I have some really exciting news. I was able to get my hands on the beta for Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader, which is the new game coming from Owlcat. I am really, really excited to dive into this with you. You might have caught my one episode of the alpha footage uh, where we kind of walked through some stuff, but there has been some changes. I heard that there's a new recruitable companion and well, let's just play this together. So we're going to start with new game. And as you can see, um, this is completely different than the alpha footage that we had in the beginning. And I will also link the alpha footage down below just in case you'd like to see how far the game has already come in just a few short months. Um, so other story modes are coming soon. This is just for the main story. So if you played other Owlcat games before, you'll know that... Um, that normally they list out like the DLCs and stuff like that as like other story modes. So that's just what's I believe missing here. Or maybe there's other stuff coming with the main story. I don't know. But it says take up the mantle of a rogue trader, a scion of an ancient dynasty of daring privateers that reign over their trade. Uh, protectorate and explore the fringes of the known galaxy. Darkness looms over the bloodline on of Von Blankis as it faces multiple dangers, from a traitor amongst its ranks to the numerous enemies seeking to destroy the most daring and brave agents of humanity. It's up to you to hold the reins of Shattered Protectorate and forge a new path for the rogue trader dynasty that finds itself in the vortex of wars, intrigues, calamities, and hearsay. The stakes rise as you cross the paths of the most powerful adversaries and rivals that chase their own goals in the darkness of the Coronis Expanse. And we also now have difficulty <laughs> modifiers, whereas before it was just one difficulty, um, which I'm really excited about. Um, I normally like to put this in more of a story-ish mode because I'm generally not as, I mean, I've gotten better over the years at turn-based combat and everything like that, but I'm generally playing these games for story. So if you're somebody that does the same thing or um, you want to try this on the core difficulty, uh, it's not recommended for players not familiar with the <laughs> Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader system. Uh, this uh, enemy stats, including wounds and dodge, are not reduced. They inflict full damage. It sounds it sounds like a, a, a very daring experience, if I do say so myself. But can you not? Ah, so yeah, you can change some of that. But for now, I think because I don't necessarily know um, how all of this is going to apply in the game itself, I'm not going to necessarily touch anything. And as I go through, we'll kind of play around with stuff. Uh, I do want to see, though, if there... So, di show skill... Okay, yeah, I like that. Points for gain... Okay. There's no, like, player... Like, if they die in combat kind of thing. There's no, Normally, I like to just have them, like, res after combat. And I don't think I saw any of that. So, we'll see as we go forward. But continue. All right, so now you can actually create your custom character as we didn't before. They've got three base game ones that you can edit if you'd like, I believe. But we're going to go with a custom character. And we've got person and we can adjust pretty much everything. I actually really like this. Uh, this is actually really cool, in my opinion, that it... um is all on this, whereas I believe it's in Wrath of the Righteous. Uh, it slides between, but this actually makes it really easy to kind of go. And I really like the fact that they're leaving your portrait up here and that it does. That's so nice. Do you see that? That is 100% fantastic. So if you're in CC and you're like trying to make sure your portrait and your person look very similar, you're all set. I don't see anything yet for custom portraits. I'm wondering if you can add them in yet or it might be something that comes later i'm sure you could probably just add it into the files yourself and have it show but i'm not going to do any of that uh just yet so what do we want to pick kind of like that one that one i think that is the base game one so these are just all the options that are currently coming with the that one is so cool <laughs> coming with the game um then there's that one uh, you know what? Let's go with her. She looks a little sassy. All right. So, body. So, you got that. 
And then you've got, at least we've got 17 faces to start. I did kind of play around with this already. Uh, what is that? Show doll visual settings. Oh, okay, cool. So that's the, um, I assume kind of when more of that com either gets put in or as you continue on, you can, I assume like once you pick your class and stuff, and then you can go back and change some of that. So wait, what is? Oh, you can change your, oh, wait, you can change your underwear color. Stop it. That's so good. Okay. Um, let's go with this for underwear color. Don't ask me why. That's what we're doing. Oh, we could give her, nah, I don't want to give her like purple undies. I mean, you could, if you really wanted to, you can do whatever you want. Is your game, actually that one's kind of cool. Okay. Show helmet. We're going to keep that off because I'm not uh, a helmet fan in any game, generally speaking. Um, and then we've got body types. And then let's see if there's... These are genuinely different faces. These aren't like... A lot of the like the face shapes and stuff, these aren't like the same face slightly tweaked. This is... This genuinely feels like you're going to get a different experience. So I'm just kind of looking at... See? Do you see how nice that is? Okay. Um, probably something more with like a slightly, like kind of more like that, I think would fit that face shape. Okay. Um, hair. I did kind of like this hairstyle and it kind of almost fits that, but maybe not. Wait. Oh, they got some wild hairstyles. I love this so much. Oh man. Look, if you want the, um, the, this, oh, it's so good. I also do just like the <laughs> the basic like side swoop hair like I don't know like I always default to stuff like that um I love this hairstyle I think I've seen a similar hairstyle uh in in Wrath and I really like this is generally also one of my favorites what is this oh that's nice also we're gonna keep the dark hair because she's got dark hair but there is a whole host of hair colors currently in the game honestly honestly that like pinky color is is doing it for me but also the music is so good all right let's do hmm or you could do like a super high i don't know if i want to do like a super high ponytail that one that one i like too honestly do we go with this hmm maybe we just go with this I kind of think we're going to go with this. Okay, tattoos. So we can have scars. Wait, are there three pages of... Is that showing that there are five pages of tattoos? What? Let's see. What is the most... Okay, so white will show the... Okay, let's go with that color. So there's that tattoo. We got to find them. I think... Oh, that one's on the top of the head. I don't know how to zoom in just yet. There might not be a zoom yet is the only unfortunate thing. Unless it's here. Because like I'm scrolling my mouse wheel. Let me shift. No, control. No, just double checking. Um. So there was a... Oh. Oh. Okay, wait. We were... We were here. Okay, so we had another forehead one. And then another forehead one. Now this one, I don't know where this one is. Mm -hmm. By the way, I am playing on a copy of the beta before the full beta release. So I am playing a few days early and I did want to quickly just say a big thank you to Owlcat for an early copy of the beta so I could check this out with y'all. Okay. Now this one, I don't know where some of these are might have been is that that okay so that was kind of like the mole on her her face kind of thing so what's on page two? Oh, so it's these but it was the same ones interesting so what if i go four um let's go here because okay so it does look like these are very similar oh that one's different well that's 11. So yeah, so you can play around with those if you want to. I'm going to go tattoo list. And what are the scar options? So there's above the eye. That one's there. Do we have like a, an all cut up one? That one's over the forehead. Mm. 
That one's something across the cheek. What does number five look like? Dun, dun. So I think... I think we're going to go with this one for now. Or... Because she got to have a scar. Hmm... Maybe this one. I think I like three the best. All right, so we'll go with this for now. I like it how I'm I'm taking this very seriously. I take all character creators seriously. I can't help it. Mm. Oh, there's that implant there. I don't know if we're gonna match implants, um, one to one with our character just yet. You know what I also really appreciate is I like I personally don't know much about Warhammer. I've never really dived into this universe which I'm very excited to do. Um, but I really like it that um, they are like making it so like if I didn't want implants, I don't need any implants and like, which I think will make it a really nice approach for new people coming into this game and like into this universe. So you can kind of get your feet wet just a little. And then as you go and like experience everything the game has to offer and this universe has to offer, you'll probably feel like more and more comfortable in some cases, or some people are gonna wanna like dive straight into implants, or maybe you just wanna be that one person that doesn't have implants in this world. And I, I just, I like that a lot. Actually, she has an implant up there. So I'm gonna give her an implant there. And I think that works. And then voice right now we've got- We need to investigate. My tactics are flawless. Ha <laughs> ha! Another clean strike. Watch and learn. And then we've got this one. I'll bring glory to my bloodline. Excellence matters. I'll see you terminated for the glory of the dynasty. Okay. So those are both very good choices. We can go with that. All right. Now, homeworld. So we can belong to the death world. Upon death worlds, the plants, beasts, and sometimes even the environment itself takes aggressive and destructive forms. Uh, so expression. Okay. I don't know if I'm gonna. Those tested and found wanting die young. Voidborn. Hmm. Humans birthed in the belly of a void vessel or aboard an ancient orbital satellite. Huh. Those who live their lives on void ships become inert to some extent. This homeworld is missing some content. Full version will be available in the release version of the game. Okay. I love these notes. Like, it just makes things so much easier and clearer to understand. Love when that happens. A hive world. So dense that frequently great swaths of the surface of the world are covered with gargantuan cities. Oh, interesting. A forge world subskin implants. Analytical implants. Uh, domain are... Okay. Then this one. Locomotive implants. Feudal implants. An imperial world is one of the million planets united by belief in the immortal god emperor. Hailing from hyper-technology societies. Hmm. So do we want death world? Or voidborn? Honestly, because death world doesn't have that note... Um, that the, some of the others do. I think for at least now, we'll start with this. So we've got talents of Brutal Hunter, trustworthy, uh, Trusty Weapons, Hellish Life. Fun! Additional deflection against flame and toxic damage. Okay. Wounded Beast. Every injury increases Death World character's agility and willpower. Huh. Cool. Uh, unlocked feature. Once per combat, when the wounds of a Death World character drop below 30%, they gain 20% temporary wounds to maximize their wounds. To, yeah, their wounds to their maximum wounds. Death World characters also gain. Okay. Now, origin. <laughs> I love this. So we can be. Ah, oh, look at the. Hold on. Before we read, look at the outfits. Okay. So this is these two currently. Oh. That looks so nice. And then Noble. Oh no, stop it. That looks so good with the movement that the character makes. <sighs> Navy officer. Okay, so this must be the default because like the default portrait and stuff like that has this similar outfit. So the priest, that came out, that looks really nice. Vagabond, oh, 
I love that coat. I do love that coat. Uh, Commissaire has no outfit. So you start the game. Naked. <laughs> and then uh, Astra Militarum Commander. Okay, so let's read a little bit of Arthes now. Imperial Guard. Okay, I can't see us ever being an Imperial Guard. So we'll skip that. Uh, okay. You used to be the servant of the God Emperor. No, I can't see that. Vagabond. Honestly, whenever I see Vagabond, it does, uh, it, it does, it does make me intrigued. The Imperium serve, uh, survives and prospers in no small part due to the narrowness of its vision. But a rebellious mind and will such as yours could not be so easily constrained. The dark paths of, a smug, of smugglers, renegades that wind behind the facade of Imperial society offer a dangerous refuge for those unwilling to bow to the law. And you used to be one of those dangerous yet resourceful individuals. Oh, oh, what a way to start the game. Okay. Uh, formerly known as Adeptus, is a vast institute that oversees the galaxy. You used to be one of those fiery, charismatic individuals concerned with keeping a close watch on your congregation. Navy officer, uh, commander of void ships. Okay, noble. I don't know if I really ever purposely picked a noble start, so that's interesting. High nobility of the Imperium are enormously privileged and powerful elite, a breed apart from the common masses they rule. You grew to adulthood upon a spire of affluence and grandeur that towered high above the common Imperial masses. You expected their obedience and lived upon the fruits of their toil, surrendered to your extended family. Okay. Biomancers specialize in manipulating biological energy. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Uh, in processes with the mi power of their mind, they're masters of the flesh, leaning, learning to shape and influence the physical forms of themselves. And then a sanctioned psyker diviner. You seek to discern the hidden past of the galaxy and know the course of events yet to come. These abilities allow diviners to look into the twisting strands of the immaterium in search of the answers they seek and sometimes even influence the outcome of... Okay, honestly, this sounds heckin' interesting. I'm torn between... Vagabond and Sanctioned Psyker. Also, um, Biomancer sounds really cool. Hmm. None of these are fully done yet, it looks like, which is fine. I'm, I kind of want to lean towards this. Also, the outfit is just top tier. Let's go with that. We're going to add this could, I could, I could 100% be leading us down, um, the wrong path, but Work in progress, okay, which is the moment of triumph. I think we saw something similar to that in the alpha where it was like, what did you do? That was like your big moment kind of thing and so on and so forth. And I think that that is this. Darkest hour, which is kind of like the opposite of your triumph. Uh, doctrines, okay. So fighter, leader, adept, or marksman. Adept is the doctrine allows a person to use intelligence and perception to find and exploit different weaknesses in enemy defense. No defense can withstand an attack from an adept. Focal point, precise single attack, defense penetration, area of effect debuffs, uh, consistent firing position. Marksman is the master of all ranged weapon, capable of quickly getting to an advantageous position and mercilessly raining fire on enemies. Marksman is well trained in using highly diverse range of arms. They especially tend to blast their enemies with burst and area effect weapons. Leader warning, this version only contains limited selection. Okay, if you plan on playing this version for 10 plus hours, consider selecting another doctrine. But leaders will use their willpower and fellowship to improve combat. Okay, and then fighter. Fighters are combatants of exceptional melee prowess, capable of dealing high damage in close quarter combat. Oh, so this, honestly, if we were going to go with Vagabond, I think I'd pick the fighter, but I feel like we're going to go with Adept for here. And then, then, so I have a question. These, okay, so these haven't changed yet on the bottom. So these are always these. So then you can be an assassin, masters of finding and executing high priority targets, vanguard, unstoppable beacon at the front, or a hunter, methodical killer, leaving a lane of dead bodies in their path. Oh, I think we're going to go. Can I pick both? Oh. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that we were going to get all this. That's really cool. So did I pick? Let me just return real quick. So we did that. Yeah, so I guess you pick. So if I don't pick anything from here, can you then pick 
the second or is this something that like comes down the road kind of thing i am maybe that's why they're a different color um but this i didn't realize so that's how you can like preview i guess what's coming so like different available abilities and stuff like that oh man that's so well done stats okay <laughs> what stats do we need that's why this is so handy i am not gonna lie the fact that this is so handy with all of this so good okay let's pick so this one um perception so these are tech use logic mm -hmm. so tech use looks like they use so it looks like a lot of intelligence from what i'm seeing um let's see intelligence perception too okay Oh, dismantling. I just want to see if, like, what some of these abilities are um, based off of. Cooldowns. Precise attack. Expose weakness of effect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. So let's go to stats. So let's definitely put into intelligence. So now I think I'm all... Can I not add any more? Okay, it's me. All right, so there is a maximum upgrade. Strength measures characters, muscle and physical prowess. A high strength allows character to lift heavier objects and punch a foe harder. Also, I want more perception. I love perception. I do. I'm not going to lie. I am I am generally somebody that does that. Uh, characters persuasive abilities. Oh, okay. We're low on that because death world. So let's, let's at least like... Build that back up weapon skill. Yeah, we can't we can't leave home without that. <laughs> Let's put a few more points into that. Ballistic skills. All forms of ranged will. Do I want okay, so toughness. Toughness, we've already got some stuff into. Agility. What does that help with? Characters, quick reflect. You know what? Let's just do that. Okay. So our ship. Wait. Wait. We can edit our ship. What do you mean I can edit? Okay, I think it's just giving us the, uh, the this. Okay, but it says the Von Valenkis flagship is the oldest and mightiest void ship belonging to the Von Valenkis family. Uh, or sorry, dynasty. Every system aboard this frigate has been tried and tested in innumerable engagements. Its weapons and turrets deliver hard-hitting volleys with pinpoint accuracy. Its plasma drives are rugged yet reliable in extreme conditions. The flagship's size and maneuverability are perfect for pursuing smaller, faster raiders and for hunting the countless pirates, xenos, and heretics in the Coronis Expanse. Numerous Vaughn... Von Valenkis rogue traders have acknowledged the exceptional performance of this vessel, and with a few minor updates, the flagship has continued faithfully to serve the dynasty. Cool. Oh, we can choose a name. Yes. Okay. We haven't chosen a name. Uh, will you give me another? Oh, Caroline? Oh, interesting. I have an actually mod. I love that. I actually haven't thought of a name for her yet. Tessera? Let's see. Uh, is it just a few? Ooh, no. Ethel, no. Zabalia. Tessera? I think we're going to go with Tessera. I don't know why, but I really like that right now. Okay. Tessera is here. Thank you all for sitting through the character creator with me. It is literally my favorite part of games like this. So here we are. I don't know if that took up the entirety of the first episode, but it probably took up most of it, which is fine. Ooh, this intro is new. <gasps> oh, this looks so cool. Okay, so I haven't met this person before. This is, this is really, in, like, really interesting. Uh, an excellent place for contemplation. The man who has approached you is gazing down into the depths of the vast temple on one of the lower decks. One has the best view of the cathedral from here, mesmerizing, wouldn't you say? An impeccable manifestation of the god emperor's sublimity. Um, okay, so this is, this, this definitely, I feel like, first set of dialogue choices. 
um, will set the tone for your character. And this is really good. So truly awe-inspiring sight. Frankly, such an excess can be tiring at times. All this ostentatious luxury, this laughable pre uh, pertinence, it is enough to make one think that the architect's meant to compensate rather than glorify. <laughs> oh no. Or you can just ask, have we met? Or do you have a particular reason for disturbing me? These are all vastly, vastly different personalities. But you're in dialogue here. You can learn more about current events of the game, change the attitude of the... Okay, or decide the fate of the entire planet. Oh, gosh. Uh, select and reply. Or press course. Okay, got it. All right, so... Honestly? She's like... In my head, I'm thinking about the the like fighter vagabond, but and that would this would be more her. But I feel like I don't know. Are she gonna be more serious and aloof? Tessera, are you more like aloof and serious, or are you more like? I mean, your portrait is fun, girl. So, uh, and it. Do you have a particular? Yeah, we're going with it. Do you have a reason for disturbing me? The man turns to you and bows. My apologies. I did not seek uh, you out to pester you with unwanted attention. Highlighted words and dialogue provide detailed information. Okay. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. Conrad Vogver, Master of Whispers in the employ of her ladyship rogue trader, Theodora von Valenkis. At your service, I haven't had the pleasure of speaking with you in person before. He bows his head and focuses his attention on you. All right. Let's play ball. I am Tessera. My regards, Tessera. He looks you up and down with a thin smile. Or should I say Tessera von uh, Valenkis? Valenkis? Yes. Scion of the Blessed Rogue Trader. I do apologize in advance, though, by the way, as we're going through this, if I butcher any words horribly. Um, I know that there's probably some uh, Warhammer specific, like, words and stuff like that that I will 100% butcher. But I promise I'll get better, especially once we get voice acting in the game, if we do, um, as that will <laughs> provide some much needed. Um, this is how you pronounce these words. But... Uh, Scion of a blessed rogue trader house in the service of the Imperium. Perhaps this kinship came as a shock to you. Understandably so, given that all evidence of the connection was lost in the generation separating you and the Lord Captain Theodora. It required no small effort on the part of her ladyship servants to discover and verify this blood tie, which has now made you one of the heirs of this dynasty. Um... You have a curious title, Master, Master of Whispers. What are your responsibilities? To put it plainly, I am head of the network of spies and informers who serve the interest of House von Vlenkis. I uncover weak links both among Lady Theodora's retinue as, and in the ranks of her rivals. I eliminate our vulnerabilities and exploit those of others. Um, you say I'm one of the rogue trader heirs. Is there another candidate? He shrugs slightly. There are, and you will meet them soon enough. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I did not know that. Uh, tell me... Who about the one whose ship I found myself. I would rather not discuss the Lord Captain behind her back, especially not on board her ship. No one knows better than I that whispers are wont to attract particularly close attention. He laughs and shakes his head. Suffice it to say, her ladyship is the bearer of the sacred warrant of trade, uh, which is a imperial relic document that affirms the preeminent rights of a rogue trader. And a woman of immense power and entitlement. However privileged your position may be, I ask that you do not incur her anger by being disrespectful or obtuse. Lady Theodora... D like, I guess I didn't think that we were being disrespectful or obtuse. Like, we... I, I kind of was expecting him to say, like, oh, she's fantastic. She's done this, this. You know what I mean? It's interesting that he didn't take it that way. Um, so why have I been brought here? So that you may fulfill your blood duty. Whatever obligations you had before, they are henceforth null and void by order of the Lord Captain. You've been requisitioned to serve the rogue trader in deeds blessed by the God Emperor. Interesting. A blood duty? Like, so you could definitely, definitely, I feel like in the back of your head, play somebody who hates this. I kind of hope you can, because I will definitely <laughs> play that person at some point. Because, like, you haven't met them before. They haven't met you before. And this is some distant blood tie, but now you're, like, forced into it. Oh, you could definitely play a willful, stubborn, stubborn person that wants no part of it if you really wanted to, hopefully, like, as we go through, because that would be a really interesting story to tell. I see that you're shocked. Yes, you understood correctly. Lady Theodora's authority indeed supersedes that of those whom you obeyed before. 
The Lord Captain's power is so great that she's capable of performing unthinkable feats, such as changing the fate of a servant of the Imperium. Your fate. Uh, so, strange title for Lady Theodora. Such is the traditions of the Imperium. Lord Captain is the title that was established in the annals of the Lex Imperialis at the times at the time when the first rogue trader entered the God Emperor's service. Therefore, it is sacrosanct. I assume you had some goal in mind when you decided to seek me out? But of course, I have come to invite you to a meeting with Lady Theodora. I imagine you have many questions for your patroness. I am sure she has just as many questions for you. It's regrettable that you haven't yet had an opportunity to speak. It has been an arduous voyage thus far. The Lord Captain and Master Edelthrad von Volenkis are conversing on the observation platform and located in one of the wings of the officer's deck. Let us join them there and I shall accompany you. 